If you want to gain referrals from doctors working with your demographic, whether for bioidentical hormone replacement or using a GLP-1 drug, learn how to show them what it is you do. It's not your certifications or your website. It's the art of communicating what you do and how you do it by demonstrating or by testimonials that will win you referrals. I'm Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to She Means Fitness Business. It's a division of my business, Voice for Fitness, and we now call this division Fitness Marketing Academy. And it's for you, primarily midlife women helping other midlife women. How meta is that? Look, I've been in your shoes at 49 to be a midlife woman, literally starting over, having been in a very comfortable position in mid six figures with no debt and a home car environment I loved. And I ditched it and said, I think I need to have a bigger reach. It's something is telling me or calling me. And there I was thinking, oh my goodness, (laughs) what have I done? I'm starting over. So I know having the knowledge and having the heart and really having to put yourself out there. You see, I had marketed for others for years and worked at a university as well as a private gym, but it's so very easy by comparison anyway so very easy to market somebody else, somebody else's business. Two dozen other trainers talk about their program, talk them up, write the copy. But suddenly when it's you, there is that moment of, you you know, I'm not supposed to brag. I'm not supposed to toot my own horn. I'm not supposed to, you know, all the little things that you learned along the way, maybe as a little girl, and, and, or I did came back to me. So I know what it's like to start from scratch, to have to make money, potentially more than some of you listening. I knew that feeling. So it's why, you know, I work with women specifically to gain some power, to gain their own ability to make money, be in charge of their lives whether or not you partner with your love of your life, but to know that you stand your own ground, that you carve your own niche, you create your own future, no matter what you want to do with it. And I help you get clients, keep them and be sure that you're making profit. So you're not just by starting your own business or doing this side hustle, creating a a job another job where you work lots of hours and don't get paid very well. And sometimes, dear friend listening, we tend to do that. We say things like, I would do this for free. I know. But I'm crying out to you, don't. Because actually when people pay, they pay attention. And when you charge your worth, the value and how you deliver it goes up. The way you think about yourself and the way you conduct yourself gets an upgrade. Everybody wins. I promise you that. There's no bigger growth opportunity than starting your own business. So if you're doing it, cheers to you. And I'd love to help you no matter where you are. You're needing clients right now. You need to also solve your midlife female client's problems better with more intel. Or you've had a great business. You have so many clients. You need your time and your freedom back to enjoy the fruits of your labors. We can help you in all three. But what I'd love for you to do first is listen to this very short episode and listen to your gut feeling. Really follow it. If you hung this up today and said, I'm just going to relax. I'm not going to do this. If it's not an urgent thing for you, what would that feel like? Would you be itching to do it in, in a day, in two weeks, in a week, in a month? And if so, then I would say this is a calling for you. And if that's the way it is for you, as it was for me, I try to walk away several times <laughs> and I keep getting hooked back in, then go to 
fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash scorecard. Download this quick business assessment that I have for you. If you're wondering, what do I need? A question someone asked in our Well Pros group, the mastermind and mentorship hot seats we do so that all of our trainers know, how do I make an offer? How do I position that? Where do I price things? How do I get clients? Somebody said, what is it that I need to have in place to have a million dollar business? And I said, have you downloaded that free sheet yet? So we were walking them through teaching them how to do that in the six month program, but you can look at it at a glance and potentially know where you need to start. All right. So without further ado, I want to get into this and I want to give you a recap. You know, this is a blue ocean. What we're about to talk about, few coaches and trainers are doing this and this outreach to the medical community is something that is yet untapped and much needed. And by the way, this is not an email campaign. You cannot hide behind your keyboard. This is getting to know one doctor at a time and letting them get to know you, what you do and how you do it. You heard it here. To gain referrals, you also might want to consider referring clients to others. My guest today is Emily Sadri, and she's a board certified women's health nurse practitioner. She's a certified nurse midwife and the founder of Aurelia Health, a modern telemedicine practice for women over 35. Aurelia Health provides comprehensive hormone replacement therapy and weight loss support with long visits and unrushed care. How often have you heard that? Never. (laughs) Emily is passionate about making complex hormonal topics accessible and believes that great health starts with happy hormones and a balanced stress response. Want you to listen to this podcast episode and then ideally connect with Emily in a perimenopause summit that she is hosting. This is great insight for you. You really want to educate yourself as much as possible, not just on the blanket statements for what what's important about menopause, what changes about menopause fitness, but we get down to the nitty gritty when we're in the flipping 50 menopause fitness specialist about what is it that women need to do pre-menopause versus perimenopause versus menopause transition and post-menopause. And you're going to get a little taste of this today because perimenopause is becoming a thing. So pay attention, folks. Emily, thank you so much for coming over here. You didn't know we were going to double dip and double work you, but we are. So (laughs) this is seriously like behind the scenes. So pulling back the curtain for our fitness professionals, our health coaches, practitioners who are working with women generally in midlife. So we really have a meta meta group. They too are in midlife themselves and working with women in midlife. But because of that, you know, it's one to three hours a week, maybe, you know, on average, a trainer, that's quite a bit of time. Somebody's spending with them and, and having worked with people for, you know, 40 years, people share everything. Once you establish a relationship, I mean, and they're moving, there's something about flowing out of you when you're in movement, you end up sharing a lot. It's a really a great opportunity. What would you suggest their role is? If they're observing things like women are weight loss resistant, even though they're doing all the right things, women are tired, canceling, have insomnia, so they're not wanting to show up to their appointments in midlife. What suggestions do you think is within scope of practice for a health and fitness pro? Mm, So many good things. Um, First, I would say being someone who's been on the other side of that, I had never heard anyone say it that way before, but yes, um, when I work with my trainer, I, I definitely overshare. Um, <laughs> so thank you for that insight. Um, and then I would say that the lovely thing about having that drawn out time, and it's sort of like that, um, that, uh, 
experience of when you're driving in the car and your kids are behind you and they share more with you because you're not staring right at them. Yep. Um, I, I get the same idea. Like if I'm sitting there and I'm doing my weights or whatever, and you're kind of behind me, it's like, it's much easier to share. And, you know, I, I can imagine that really good advice would be if I, if I was in that position, I mean, kind of being someone who stood by laboring women for hours and hours and end, I, I have a sense of what that means to kind of be in the room and hold space. Um, probably the best thing, and I'm sure you've talked about this a lot is resist the urge to fix everyone and really hone your active listening skills. Sometimes you can get somebody there just by asking genuine loving questions like, tell me more about that. Or have you asked your doctor about that? You know, Mm -hmm. because as soon as you launch into like, oh, well, I had this experience and it was so great. You're going to lose somebody. Um, And yeah, I think just the more questions, the better and have a network of, of people who you trust, who, you know, are good in your local area with hormones and with, um, you know, supporting people from a a holistic approach. Um, but don't be doling it out. Yeah. On that note, I would love to ask on behalf of everybody listening, I think they struggle with this. You know, there was an initiative quite a bit ago, um, between American Medical Association and American College of Sports Medicine. And I think all trainers thought, oh, here it comes. It's going to rain referrals from doctors. And guess what? It's a drought because Mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. What's appealing to you when you're thinking about your patients you know, and knowing they need to potentially exercise, but knowing they also have a history of maybe getting hurt or not, not doing it, starting and stopping. What's appealing about a health and fitness professional that might make you refer to them or be interested at least in some collaboration? Yeah. I mean, I think that if you're a good provider, you understand the benefits of relationships and, most providers, even myself, even though we prioritize 30 to 60 minutes in our practice, the reality is it doesn't make sense for me or my other nurse practitioners to be the coach. It doesn't make mm-hmm. sense for me to spend time checking in with them every day in messages. Mm-hmm. That's a better role for someone whose role is to coach. Mm-hmm. And so if you can lay out, I think for a provider sort of how much of a relationship you can form with a person and also how you work to habit build and start small and kind of not push someone like beyond where it's reasonable for them to go. Um, that would be a big buy-in for me. Like, Mm. yes, this is a person who's going to be in your corner. Who's going to be supporting you because ultimately like we all, we always knew in birth that like a du- having a duel in the room was a huge asset, right? Because that person was never going to leave the bedside, whereas the provider might be managing two or three people in labor. Mm. Um, and I feel like it's the same thing. It's like that continuity of relationship, someone who's in the corner. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but for me, that would be what I would be looking for is like who, what kind of coach is great at relationships. And mm-hmm. I will tell you locally with my private clients the coaches I refer to are the ones who are not shoving information down people's throats and are just providing a long-term trusting relationship that the patient's going to keep coming back to. Mm, Love that. That was, those were golden nuggets. Okay. Knowing you are talking to the majority of our audience, probably we are the meta meta. They are women in midlife themselves going through changes and working with women in midlife or beyond. And if there was one thing that you could tell them, you know, because you see patients coming maybe in in big need, like they get to you because they're calling uncle, I need help. I, I probably tried something else to figure this out before coming here. What, if anything, might you say to them? I think that when you're in the health space, you tend to think that you have all of the answers. And so depending on what your specialty is, if you're a gut person or this person or a trainer person, you may think that like your problem is something that's in your scope. Like my problem is that I'm exercising too much or I didn't hit the gym enough or I, 
And in, and I think it's really important, especially for people that know a lot to find a good partner to support them. Mm. Like we always need a person to like, I need a person that I can go to and be like, I'm feeling all these things. Cause even if I would have those answers for somebody else, we kind of have to like, remember that we need care as well. And I will also say that I strongly believe that our resilience and our capacity to kind of show up with big energy and do a lot of things is highly reliant on our hormone replacement plan in midlife um, Mm -hmm. if we're deep into perimenopause and in menopause. And so, you know, if you feel like you're kind of pushing through and like you have to rely on, um, you know, a lot of tricks to keep your energy up, I would just encourage you like as a high performing person myself, I cannot perform highly without my hormones adequately, adequately replaced. And I would imagine that if you're having to be physical in your profession every day, that that's even more important. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here. Okay, everybody. So I'm going to send you back over to the flipping 50 episode that we just did with Emily. And the reason being is She's actually talking about a lot of things. We got into the nitty gritty about things that may be beneficial for you as the person you are dealing with midlife changes, but also opening you up to new ideas and to kind of what what we talked about and see collectively as this is kind of the approach and the the moment that we're in and the diverse amount and different thoughts people are having about HRT or about this journey that they're having through menopause. And there is an opportunity to join Emily's Summit about perimenopause. And if you don't know, I would say that of three words this year, like the buzzwords are longevity and menopause and perimenopause is having its own moment. People are getting, this is different. This is a different phase. And I think it's a really important one because if we can get this one right, you know, the menopause transition itself, post-menopause, and that means like till death do us part, all goes so much better. So we'll, you'll find the link to join that in the show notes. It's free, but when you can get information like this from doctors, you're so much more schooled than educated yourself and you'll be better at what it is you're doing. Not necessarily having to be the expert, but knowing where to find them. Emily, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you so much, Deborah. Deborah.